Well, here's the uh, carriage uh, cross slide and compound off the lathe. And uh, uh, I just have it sitting up around the surface plate, turn it around a little bit. It's in actually relatively good shape for its age. Um, as you can see, it operates well and, and it, it tends to track pretty good. But uh, as I mentioned, he wanted to add um, some dial indicators on it um, so that he uh, can control it much better. The, uh, so he, he sent me a little chicken scratch of what he wanted best as that comes through on camera and uh, once I got the, uh, the actual uh, cross slide over here um, I did some dimensions on it um, just to uh, start trying to figure out what the heck I was going to do uh, in building the, uh, the mount pieces for it and so uh, I went after it and I based on some dimensions and miscommunications between myself and Chewy, um, I roughed out the blocks, and it turns out I roughed them out wrong. But uh, anywho, they were starters, and so I cut the first dovetail, um, and I'll show you how it fits here. Came out well, and the first thought was um, to go ahead and have uh, cut it down. It's not supposed to be that tall, and then go ahead and. Um, uh, put in set screws to tighten it down with counter bores and then the uh, dial indicator would be over would be over on the side there and, and so he's planning on putting a, a two inch dial indicator on it so he'd have travel and so that the dial indicator would be sitting sitting right here and being able to run on it and then again another one will be on this side so that he can have one from each direction and uh, be able to uh, uh, move it and set zeros much better than than the uh, the dials on the handle. So anyway, um, this one fit well, and uh, just got to decide and finish up the rest of the uh, the parts on it, the the machining on it. Uh, flipped it around and maybe do something something like this instead, and pick up the centerpiece, have the dial indicator hit right here. Um, so kind of just mark it out with red for just just for some thinking and get rid of all this material up here and have the dial indicator right there in the center and have a thumb screw that comes down and tightens on it and then the set screws here to lock it in place but as i mentioned you know cutting this dovetail it went real smooth um, not an issue so i was pretty excited and uh, ready to move on to the second one had the dimensions and was just going to blast it out yeah well I blasted it out all right. I'll turn this around here. So I started uh, started working away at it, and uh, again I had I had my dimension sheets here, and I started doing the math, and then I came over and said, okay, I got to refigure this, and did some more chicken scratching and some math and everything, and yep, everything's good, and boom. You can boom. There's my old word boom. I haven't had a boom in a while. Uh, I missed. Once I once I got over here, I started looking and I went, oh boy, something's way off in my math. So anyway, uh, this part's junk. Uh, simple to remake, and uh, going to do that. So just fooling around with it though, and uh, uh, this one uh, will probably be taller. Uh, probably be taller and try to put the indicator onto here which I think I had the dimensions on the block mixed up and this one was probably the height so that that indicator would would butt here not much space here to hit so anyway I thought I'd show you guys uh, where I'm at right now um, and uh, I'll show you a little bit of the machining uh, won't show you roughing the parts out um, and uh, maybe show you a little bit of the dovetail and then some of the finish as we get there. Okay, hope you enjoy and uh, see if I can... Oh, so anyway, that's what I wanted to add is since I goofed this piece, trying to go too fast, and it was just the fact that I was trying to get into the house. Uh, uh, anyway, that's me. I usually go too fast. Well, 
I fooled around and I don't know if this will come up or not. Um, get rid of this light. Um, so I, Tom Lipton over at Ox Tool helped me out and uh, loaded a, a CAD program onto my computer and I'm trying to teach myself uh, AutoCAD. So this was one of my first attempts. So since I goofed up on that part, I said, well, let's, let's go in and, and uh, draw it. Um, one, to learn how to draw. And then secondly, go ahead and do the, do the offsets. So this, of course, the red hatch here is, the, uh, is the, this piece right here. And then the, the green up here is the uh, dovetail cutter. And the green down here is the half inch end mill that I basically open up the slot with. So you can see it gives me an offset now from the edge of tool to the edge of the opening, 456 thousandths. And when I rough out with the half inch end mill, it gives me a dimension of 469 thousandths to move the tool over in each direction to rough out the bottom slot. Um, so I had some fun uh, trying to learn how to use the program. Definitely works out the math and it, uh, it uh, confirmed that it was a 45 degree angle, which, you know, by using a, the little tooling that I have, I, I had already determined that. But um, so anyway, I thought I'd share that with you and trying to trying to get better at it. All right. Be back soon. Well, here's just a little bit of an in progress shot. Uh, just wanted to show you how it works. So you can see the indicator moving there. I don't think there's any glare on it. There's quite a bit of you can see how much uh, slop there is in the hand wheel there. Let's see what that is. There's uh, 10, 20, 30, a little over 30 thousandths backlash. Uh, so anyway, just a little uh, in progress. Do a little more carving up on that block and we'll bring you back. Okay, after a uh, little phone discussion, after some photos were sent over to my buddy, uh, a little redesign in process. So, rough cut it, and uh, let I just show you uh, where it's at now. Turns out, had uh, it stayed in the center uh, when the dial, in, when the whole mechanism moved over, the edge of the dial indicator would end up hitting the headstock on the lathe. So. I uh, just thought I'd uh, give you a little update and be back. Just uh, another little uh, update. So uh, it's cleaned up and uh, now I need to basically uh, slit it right here to act as a, cl a clamp. And then uh, going to go ahead and run a 1032 here to create a, a clamping knob on it. And then uh, right here we'll be putting in two uh, set screws to uh, tighten down. Okay, so be back with you some more. little 20,000 20,000 thick if I can say it uh, slitting saw here
Well, as you saw, the blade slipped a little bit, but I just slowed it down and uh, made the full pass all the way through. Okay, well, it's uh, basically done, um, but I got one problem. You can see this will focus. The slitting saw traveled on me. Could have done better with my bandsaw. Um, so it it didn't cut a perfectly straight slot, which I guess I should have known that with a 20 thousandths thick blade going that far through half inch. So see what the Chewy wants to do with it. You can either uh, cut the slot bigger or live with it. Not happy with it, but it's got to get some cleanup. But uh, it tightened down real well um, in the uh, in the holder. And I uh, got brass uh, set screws in here, brass tip set screws. And uh, as you can see she works nice. So we'll see, uh, we'll see a little later. Well, this one's finished, other than detail, a uh, little detailing on it. I, uh, I repaired uh, my slot, um, ended up going back in with another slitting saw and cutting it at 60 thousandths rather than 20 thousandths. Um, a 20 thousandths blade just wandered and 60 thousandths works fine. So all it needs now is just some uh, little cleanup, a little further cleanup and detailing and now I gotta move on to the the back one back here. That's the next build. Alright, be back to you soon. Well I came up with a change of design. Hasn't been approved by my buddy yet. It wants me to build a second one of these. Um, but I looked at the, uh, the cross slide here and it's got a T-slot. And so I ended up just making a quick bracket and holds the indicator and just uh, put in one, uh, one set screw into the T-slot, a uh, little brass head uh, uh, set screw. But, you know, simple, simple unloosen it, and this can slide wherever it needs to. Much quicker. We'll tighten up on it, and it's ready to use. Um, probably change this out to an Allen head, do a little cleaner job. Just a piece of metal I booted up real quick, so we will see if, uh, if he'll buy off on that, and I don't have to build another one. Okay. We'll be back and uh, see if I sold the goods here. Well, the project's finished. Uh, my buddy Chewy, my mentor, he accepted the build. <laughs> so, uh, just wanted to show it to you. We ended up going, going and using the uh, the T slot to mount the other dial indicator, rather than uh, building another block for it. So it turned out well. The, um, so this view would be as we were standing at the lathe and uh, your, uh, your in feed and then your longitudinal feed. X and Y. X and y. You see, my mentor's behind me going, come on, speak machine, it's X and Y. Okay, so there's the view of it. Turned out good and he's happy, so I'm happy too. Catch you guys later.